Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 113 with me Craig Barton. Now as you know by now every fourth resource of the week this year will be a premium resource. That's a resource that is for sale on TES that has been uploaded and created by a real life teacher from the classroom straight to TES. And if you want to snap it up like I've done with my hard earned money then by all means feel free to do so. So this is Discovering Pythagoras' Theorem. Now I am, I am currently in my 11th year of teaching which means I've probably taught Pythagoras every single year to at least three different classes. So that is a good, if my math is right, at least 30 run-throughs of Pythagoras. And about ooh, 10 or 11 of those will have been the first time a class has ever seen Pythagoras. And for me, the first time a class has ever seen something is always a very, very special moment. It's always an opportunity to hook them in with something because they don't come in with any negative preconceptions of it. Often if students struggle with maths and you find yourself teaching them ratio or fractions or percentages or something with algebra, you, you met with resistance with kids saying, sir, I, I don't get this, I never got it before, blah, blah, blah. But when you get something new like Pythagoras, then it's a real opportunity to engage them and to kind of teach them the way, the way you feel it should be taught and, and get a real positive relationship between the kids and the topic. <coughs> Excuse me. So over the years, I've dabbled with a few different ways of doing, of, of introducing Pythagoras. Um, with some classes, I've um, we've done it as a kind of number-based investigation where I've shown them areas and they've got to link together the numbers. Uh, with other classes, I've done the classic Perigles dissection, getting the scissors out and matching it up and so on. But this is a way I haven't tried before, but this is certainly a way I will be using. Um, and that's why I've chosen this as my resource of the week. So I just thought it was simple and, and rather innovative as well. And it, the resource comes with a load of support as well. So I'll take you through it. Um, it contains six files. Um, they are notebook files and PowerPoint files. So if you don't have the smart notebook software like myself, um, I don't have it you can use the PowerPoint equivalent and then it has supporting worksheets as well. So if we have a look at the um, the first PowerPoint, it's a really simple setup. All the students need a square paper um, and as the instructions say, start with four lines, turn them into squares, work out the area of each square. So hopefully they get one, four, nine and 16. And then what happens if we shifted the squares up by one line? And this terminology of shifted is gonna be very important in this kind of mini investigation. So um, the students are then challenged to work out the area of those squares. Now this is interesting as it, as it stands because a lot of students will tell you that's still got an area of one and that's still got an area of four and so on. But the authors kindly provided a little diagram there which shows one way that it could be used to, to actually work out the areas by splitting the shapes up. So when you're working out this particular one here, you can split it up into a whole square in the center and then split these up into triangles which can be put together to form rectangles which will get you that that's got an area of five. Now this is a kind of low barrier approach that I'm a fan of. Every student can get going with that, drawing the squares, shifting the squares, and then splitting it up into mini rectangles and so on. And fairly quickly, they'll, they'll should reach that conclusion that it's 2, 5, 10, and 17. Now this is interesting then. What do you think would happen if we shifted them up by 2 and by 3? Now I'd be tempted at that point to get all the students to write down a little prediction. And it'll be no surprise, I'd imagine, that um, students will think if you shifted it up by another one, maybe the area is going to go up instead of by one, but by two. So maybe that's going to be a three, that's going to be a six, that's going to be an 11, and so on. Um, but when you work it out, um, it isn't that at all. And um, th there's some really helpful diagrams showing the students how to do it. If I show you the answers, you'll see that when you shift it by one, it goes up by one. When you shift it by two, it goes up by four. And when you shift it by three, it goes up by nine. Now at that point, you, you're at the stage of the lesson where you can ask the kids, what on earth is going on here and why is it going on? Why is it going up by two and then by, sorry, sorry, by four and then by nine? Why is it not going up by two and by three? And with a really helpful diagram, you can show that if you shift the four by four square up by two, it gains an extra square there in the area that's you can pick out your 16 whole squares and then you've got an extra four squares made up then that shift has created that and there's Pythagoras' theorem essentially and it's it's interesting isn't it because there's a big kind of thing in maths of whether kids should be able to discover things or whether there's any point in them discovering things that have already been discovered and shouldn't we just tell them it and so on but I, I don't mind this at all, this. And fair, fair enough, you can make the point that we're not actually discovering Pythagoras, you're guiding them right the way down to it. But it's an engaging experience for the students. 
and they'll probably feel like they've discovered something and they'll remember this lesson and if they remember this relationship and remember the shift then it's going to stick in their heads far more than if they're just told the told the formula so i'm a big big fan of this so there's your kind of hook and um, there's your kind of way into it and then students get some kind of classic uh, classic examples to work out what's missing and so on but then what's really nice is it doesn't end there like i'd be happy with that that's my that's my first lesson i've got them into pythagoras and um, now i'm happy to just to kind of go through resources that i've used in the past but the author's kindly provided a second uh, powerpoint which is more your kind of traditional examples but still building on from this same way of introducing it and then we get onto the kind of formal definition of it here and then we get on to more formal um, kind of more standard examples but every time with the answers provided which is really really nice and really handy and then by the time we get to the end we've got key questions and we get in context questions with your classic wall and so on but in terms of that first PowerPoint I, I was very very happy with that I think that's a quite interesting engaging and innovative way to get students to play around with numbers play around with shapes and see if they can come up with this this famous relationship so there it is discovering pythagoras a premium resource of the week and i shall return with a fresh free resource of the week next week take care and bye for now